This video will discuss the quantum mechanical energies of the hydrogen molecule ion. So we've discussed the hydrogen molecule in the previous couple of videos where we have two nuclei, which are each a proton, and two electrons for the H2 molecule. And that's still beyond our power to solve analytically or exactly. So what we're going to do in this video is look at the hydrogen molecule ion, H2+, where there's two nuclei and one electron, to give us an idea about these concepts like potential energy surfaces and see some of the consequences of the Born-Oppenheimer approximation and what happens when we try to solve these for these wave functions in practice. All right, so our Hamiltonian in the Born-Oppenheimer approximation in atomic units it's going to be the kinetic energy of electron 1 minus 1 half del squared 1. Since our nuclei are considered to be fixed under the Born-Oppenheimer approximation, their kinetic energy is 0. We have minus 1 over R1a, which is the attraction of electron 1 to nucleus A. We have minus 1 over R1b, the attraction of the electron to nucleus B, plus 1 over Rab, the distance between nucleus 1 and nucleus 2. All right, so for the ground state of this system, we're going to assume a trial wave function, which is a linear combination of two basis functions. Basis function number 1 is a 1s orbital centered at nucleus A. Basis function number 2 is a 1s orbital centered at nucleus B. And there's a coefficient for each of these, so our wave function is Ca times Psi A plus Cb times Psi B. And we're solving the secular determinant method from the secular determinant from the linear variational method from HC equals ESC, the matrix Schrodinger equation from a few chapters ago. And we solve this for the energies of our system when we look at the determinant of the Hamiltonian matrix minus E times the overlap matrix equaling zero. And our trial wave function, psi i, for nucleus A and nucleus B, is going to be a 1s orbital centered at each nucleus. So psi i equals 1 over the square root of pi cubed, e to the minus r minus ri, where each of these functions is centered at the individual nucleus in question. All right, so our secular determinant here that we're going to solve is the H minus ES matrix determinant. So we have HAA minus ESAA, Hamiltonian element and overlap integral, HAB minus ESAB, HBA minus ESBA, HBB minus ESBB. The determinant of this is going to equal zero. So two by two matrix thus far. We're going to assume that our wave function here is normalized, which if we integrate this from overall space, this actually is normalized. So that means SAA and SBB both equal 1. However, these functions are not orthogonal. So SBA and SAB do not equal 0, but they do equal each other, as does HAB and HBA, because our Hamiltonian operator is a Hermitian operator. So SAA and SAB go to 1, HAB, HBA and SBA go to HAB and SAB. So we have HAA minus E, HAB minus ESAB, HAB minus ESAB again, and HAA minus E again, because this nucleus is equivalent to that one. There's no difference, so the Hamiltonian matrix element of it interacting with itself should once again be the same as that value. All right, so we've set all of those and set that equal. If you solve this determinant equation, this times this minus this times this equals zero. If you solve that polynomial for the energies, you get two possible states, E plus and minus. The energy is equal to HAA plus or minus HAB, so the Hamiltonian of the isolated uh, hydrogen atom plus or minus the coupling divided by 1 plus or minus the overlap of these two basis functions. All right, so we solve that to get that. 
So what are these two, what are these three matrix elements that we, are, we need to get? So we have HAA, which is equal to, so we have the expectation value of the Hamiltonian operator for these different terms. So there's four terms, so we need to do the integral over all space of psi star h psi for all the individual terms of h. Expectation value of our kinetic energy operator minus one half del one squared. That's the same as it was for the hydrogen atom, that's plus one half. Expectation value of the attraction of the electron to the nucleus, minus one over R1a. That's the same value as it was for the hydrogen atom. That's minus one in atomic units. So far, so good. Now we have the attraction. We have the attraction of an electron in orbital psi a to nucleus b. That's different. We haven't had that term before. That term ends up being a function called j a b, which I've defined on the right over here. That's e to the minus two r a b times the quantity 1 plus 1 over RAB minus 1 over RAB. So that's just a fairly complicated function in terms of the distance of the two nuclei from one another. Then we have uh, 1 over RAB acting on uh, an electron in orbital psi A. Uh, 1 over RAB is just a constant under the Born-Oppenheimer approximation and our wave function is normalized, so this becomes one over RAB. All right, so that is our first value there. We have plus one half minus one is minus one half, plus JAB, this function, plus one over RAB. That's our first term in here. Now we need HAB, which is gonna be slightly more complicated. All right, we have the expectation value of the kinetic energy of the overlap uh, of that between psi star A and psi B. Kinetic energy operator acting on psi B and then the result overlapping with psi A. That is equal to minus one half of our overlap integral minus a function called KAB, which I've defined here as minus E to the minus RAB times one plus RAB. Again, just a complicated function of internuclear distance. The expectation value of the attraction to nucleus A for the overlap of these two basis functions, and same thing for nucleus for the other nucleus, nucleus B. Those two are both the same value, and that value is KAB. Oh, sorry, this value is minus, yeah, minus one half SAB minus KAB. KAB was the value of this integral for each of those. And the last thing is one over RAB times the overlap of psi A and psi B. So that's just SAB, the definition of the integral, divided by RAB. So adding those together, we have our HAB matrix element is minus one half overlap of A and B plus KAB plus SAB uh, over RAB. So I think we have a two minus uh, we have a minus KAB there and two plus KABs. So that's where we get the one resulting. Then we have a minus one half SAB and then a plus SAB over RAB. All right. So the energy, the change in energy of these two states. So our reference state is a hydrogen atom, which is equally, which is infinitely far apart from one of these nuclei. So we're gonna spread these nuclei infinitely afar apart and just have the electron be in, in one of these, uh, one of these be a hydrogen atom and the other be a nucleus infinitely far apart. So what's the change in energy when we bring the second nucleus into play? That's gonna be the energy of our states, E plus or minus, minus the energy of a hydrogen atom. The energy of a hydrogen atom in atomic units is equal to minus one half, so conveniently, we have a minus one half from here and a minus one half from there, so those are going to cancel. The resulting value for delta E plus minus, which is gonna be this minus, this plus a half, is JAB plus one over RAB plus or minus SAB times one over RAB minus a half plus KAB divided by one plus or minus SAB. So reminding ourselves that SAB is the overlap between these two, JAB and KAB coming from these 
uh, integrals down here. So we can plot these values as a function of internuclear distance, RAB, giving us the potential energy surface. We have two states, e, uh, psi plus and psi minus. So psi minus is the lower energy state here. For the, pos for the higher energy state, at infinite separation, the nucleus comes in and it perturbs relative to the energy of the hydrogen atom and the energy just goes up. So this E plus is just going up. There's no bound state there. The, the nucleus just gets repelled. For the lower energy state, psi minus or, or E minus, we start and as we come in, the energy decreases and the energy goes down and down until it reaches a minimum, which we'll call the equilibrium uh, internuclear distance there, R min. And then beyond that, if you get too short, it starts to go up. So this shape is actually qualitatively the shape of what happens when you get chemical bonding. So the nucleus is attracted as it comes in closer and closer. It reaches a minimum distance, a, a average bond length, and then it gets repelled. So this potential energy function that we're using for the harmonic oscillator to derive what our potential energy function should be for a vibrating diatomic molecule, the shape of that actually comes from taking the expectation value of the Hamiltonian and then turning that into our secular determinant for this linear variational method where we have our trial wave function being a 1s orbital on each of these nuclei. Even for this simple of a model system for this uh, model of the hydrogen molecule ion, we still get that qualitative behavior of repulsion at short range, attraction at long range, and a finite dissociation energy giving us a minimum energy bond length in which our molecule can exist and the energy of those two nuclei can be stable, leading to several bonded vibrational states.